So it's a day after the release of version 1.8 of the uh, Serif range or the Affinity range, the Affinity designer, photo and publisher. And I was quite excited. I put the company video promotion onto my channel, which many who subscribe to my channel would then possibly see. However, when I looked at the specs and I went through it, I realized that there's not that many exciting new features. So uh, I felt a bit down, but I thought, let me, before I go and put my head to the pillow, because it's actually way past midnight here, yeah? I thought I wanted to do this video. So at least when I wake up tomorrow morning, um, that those folk who are excited about the new release have a bit more of a perspective as to whether it's something that they should get very excited about. So let's have a look at it. So I'm going to go to the technical specs um, and we can scroll down over here. So you see where all, where all these new things are. Uh, that's the indications that that's available now in 1.8. So I'm going to scroll far down and you'll see it says key new functionality new to 1.8. Okay, so now I'm not going to go into any depth. I'm just going to high level look at it and then maybe speak about one or two things that I, I'm excited about, but not in a sense that it's like totally brand new. It's just additional features to what already exists. Okay, so unified toolbar, that's for guys who are on Mac OS um, or Java and above. So that's the uh, Apple benefit there here we have customizable now here you'll see it's in red on the iPad so the desktop has that already we could customize it so that is not anything new for people on the desktop now if we go down here these are all the features that already exist in the software it's only the red parts that are new in 1.8 so we see we come to this section so let's look at it when you set up a new document, you have a couple of new things happening here. There's a thumbnail based a visual. You open it up and I'll, I'll show you now. But then you also can create your own presets. So it's a kind of neat interface. Um, you can create some custom page presets. You can create a document as an artboard, which I was under the impression that that is possible. I used to do that when you, I did a video on it so maybe I, I don't understand the, the context of this that much but let's assume that's quite new then access affinity templates now templates is a new kind of deal here so you're able to access in your new documents access templates you've created and of course when you develop a document and you have something on it you can export it as a template and this is the part where you can access it again. So I'm not too sure what the templates are, how different they are. That I'll probably have to give some insight when I get to know more about that. But these new features, let's just go have a peek at it. So here's where it is. If you go file and you say new. So here we have this layout. So it's put relatively nicely over here. Um, you know, following into the normal trend of, of the visual demonstration I think it's probably because a lot of people coming from other softwares had this kind of interface so Serif decided that they they're going to kind of standardize it in this way so I won't hold it against them it's it's a nice layout um, the other thing is also I in the videos I always used to say what I like about uh, Serif and the affinity range is that you don't have two buttons like one is landscape uh, landscape and the other one portrait they used to just have portrait so if you check the box it was portrait if you unchecked it it was landscape however they've changed that now and gone back to the two buttons anyhow it's just a minor thing um yeah pretty much that's the same so here what happens is now you you have the structure and if you want to create a preset there's your my presets if you look in there there's nothing so if i wanted to take this document and maybe create a preset where I can tweak it it won't put a preset like right at the bottom it will create a preset in here so you click this plus button here um, or 
I could go in and modify this area of the specific document before I create a custom and if I click here now you can just see this 266 when I click you'll come in here and you'll see that comes across here with all those new settings okay so I can right click rename or delete it so I'm just deleting that so I think this is a a nice feature you can create your own presets there again is the templates so you could come in here and select the templates and open them so I'm, I'm not too familiar with what the whole purpose of the templates are I will cover that in a future video so yes these are the new features let me just see what other things there so that I have that covered no that's pretty much the, the new one so let me just create a, a document so I can open something yeah Okay, let's go down and see what's still new. Okay, here we have aligning of nodes. So if you could select nodes and you could use the align tools. Now that I know we could do with the previous version. So it's only relevant to the iPad. It's now an additional feature in the iPad. And then these areas here, these new ones have to do with the curves and the nodes and using kind of square bracket keys for the ability to jump through the different nodes now i'm not going to take you there and go experiment with them but this this is just like three additional features for nodes and curves which uh, possibly might be revolutionary but uh, it doesn't kind of look that way for me i think the improve expand stroke for anyone who's watched my videos you know i use that quite often i even created a shortcut key for that so um, let's see if we go for a, a stroke, well, it's this object, um, and I'm going to just convert to curves, let's see how we can maybe tweak this, um, and do some stuff with it, so, so if I have those structures, um, and I want to now I'm going to make this transparent in the middle and I'm going to give it a, a thickness of that line area like that. So what the expand does is it takes the stroke and then it expands it into a full color and then you'll have a stroke on the outside of this and a stroke on the inside. So I use that a lot when I'm creating offsets and a lot of other editing. Um, go watch some of those videos you'll see what I'm saying there so if you go to layers you'll see the expand stroke now I've got it as a quick key because I use it that much as I mentioned um, so what they are claiming is that this expand stroke feature has been more refined now in previous case when I used to do the expand stroke sometimes with certain objects the the amount of nodes that used to be placed on the object used to be very kind of irregular. So it did the job well, but I believe that this is doing it even better. So if you click here, um, yep, it's, it finishes off the structures very nicely. Previously you'd have, and it depends on whichever structure you had, previously you'd have a bit of like irregularity, you know, in the outlines. Um, it wouldn't be as nice and rounded off. So that for me is probably one of the nicer features the expand stroke improvement okay so to understand what this expand stroke means uh, detaches outlines from vector objects to create new shapes adds new outlines to expanded strokes so that's what already exists it's just that they've improved that okay um so so far for me i think that's the only thing that i'm very excited about or relatively more excited about and you can see there's no other changes here we're just literally scrolling with no red spots then they have uh, the stock panel now this was in affinity photo the stock panel did exist it wasn't in affinity designer and what they've done now is just placed it here as a stock area so you could get pixel pixel away and unsplash so it comes in now as one of the if we can say it's a studio feature so if you go up here to view you'll go under studio you'll see now that it's uh, one of the choices there so stock wasn't there before 
which is very nice because now you can just open the images and get it access here and drag it across. Um, you don't have to maybe go across to Affinity Photo and then go, you know, get photos from the uh, the online uh, stock gallery. And that's all free th from those sites. Okay, uh, let's see what we have more. Um, that's a stock panel. No red, no red. Pantones, uh, for people who are interested in pantones, might mean a lot to them. For me, it doesn't carry much weight. Um, again, when we export, we can export in this format, which is a template format. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I don't know what difference the template is. I'll get to research what that is. But you go to File, the normal exporters there, and there they've got Export as Templates. If you click that, it just has the template format when you export. Okay. So templates might be of great value and then I have to swallow my words of there not being much change. But for now, these little changes are really not that totally dramatic. For a release uh, like a full on 1.9, a full point release, I don't think it's too too fantastic. Look here, there's nothing in addition here. And then we have here, this is to do with brushes. So this has got some additional handling features on raster brushes. And then they've unified the, the brushes across the board. So if you find a raster brush in designer, in photo and publisher, they'll all have the similar brush setups. Okay, so that you don't go to the one and, and one and they don't have the same brushes like the other ones. That's it. So have a fantastic day and God bless.